Hello ladies, we may not have met before, but my name is Alzael, patriarchal member 14977518, token of vision. As we all know, the patriarchy has maintained the proper world order since the beginning of humanity, ensuring that our wives, daughters, mothers, sisters are kept down and in chains by we, the men who love them. In the last few decades, however, the patriarchy has come under attack from a new threat to masculine domination. A powerful, evil threat that seeks to strengthen and empower women by convincing them that they're a weak and victimized oppressed class fighting an omnipresent and unassailable foe. That threat is feminism, an arch-nemesis that champions the liberation, betterment, and glory of all women, a cause that it is so deeply effective at that in over four decades it has managed to obtain the loyalty and support of nearly 25% of the female population some of whom even have degrees that are not gender studies related. Obviously, we must do something about this. So, to combat this most dangerous enemy, I have been asked to head up a new agency that will attempt to subvert and infiltrate this threat, the Bureau of Internalized Misogyny, Battery, and Oppression. Already we have scored several astounding successes, one of the greatest, which, greatest of which is with this woman, slave designation Jackie, who not only has acknowledged her rightful place in the kitchen, but has openly defi defined herself as a proud misogynist. Good luck in your, further in your further pursuits, Jackie. We wish you and your overlord well. He's a lucky man. As an integral part of our multi-stage initiative, the Bureau began a blog using one of our operatives who had undergone level 6 gender role conditioning, in which she states her goal to make 300 sandwiches for her fiancé. Upon reaching this simple goal, her fiancé would ask her, her to marry him. Through extensive conditioning, we were able to internalize her misogyny enough to convince her that she was making these sandwiches out of a pure desire of love and wanting to see her fiancé happy. That being able to make someone she loved happy would, in turn, give her a sense of, of fulfillment. Because we taught her that being in a relationship with someone who so deeply appreciates the care which you show for them and the things that you do for them can be one of the greatest experiences a person can know. You stupid woman! Wait, what? Who did that? Somebody stop the filming! As you can tell, her conditioning is going very well. Only a few dozen more sandwiches and she'll have earned her slave ring. I mean engagement ring. We can edit that out, right? However, recently a flaw has been discovered in our initiative. It came to my attention through a Twitter post, post that a young lady had failed to make a sandwich a few days ago. In displeasure, her master had given her injury, for which the patriarchy has authorized me to apologize to her for. She should not have endured such rough, rough treatment at the hand of her male oppressor. According to the official guidelines, it is clearly stated that, fail that failure to make a sandwich is only a light whipping offense. <sighs> Obviously we can't have this, ladies. We simply cannot have women who don't know how to make a proper sandwich. Otherwise, we would lose one of the cornerstones of the patriarchy. If women can't make sandwiches, next they might forget how to do the laundry. Or worse, they may want the remote. The first step in fixing this problem is to help the women folk of the world re-earn their proper place in the kitchen. To this end, I have started this video, which will hopefully be the first in a series of videos aimed at how to make proper sandwiches in order to re-educate women into the natural way of things. It's not much, but maybe it will help you non-feminist women folk get through life a little better and improve your service. Remember, as long as your man is happy, you'll be happy. Oh, and don't worry, I'll try to use short words and simple sentences. Now, Many of you aren't aware of this, but there is in fact a mathematical formula that will help you to determine the perfect sandwich. Now this math is of course complex and hard to understand, so don't worry your little lady heads about it. You don't have to be this detailed. But for those of you who are good at math... <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Just a little inside patriarchal joke there. Anyway, let's move along. First, there are three general sandwich rules that you will have to understand. Number one, moisture barriers. When using moist ingredients such as lettuce, ketchup, 
or mustard and insert another topping between the bread and the moist ingredients to serve as a barrier for the moisture and prevent the bread from getting soggy. The most typical moisture barriers are cheese, butter, or mayonnaise. Butter and mayonnaise work because they are hydrophobic and will keep the water contained. Rule number two, not too many ingredients. One classic mistake in making a sandwich is in using too many ingredients. Too many ingredients will overwhelm the taste of the other ingredients and make the sandwich larger and thus harder to eat. Generally, a perfect sandwich will have three to four toppings. Rule number three, cut your sandwiches diagonally. This is quite important to do. For one, the diagonal edges make it easier to dip the sandwich into soups or other containers. The hypotenuse length maximizes the, the, hypotenuse length maximizes the sandwich filling contact area, and it provides a better grab area, and as well as easier biting. It's a thing that seems small, but going that extra mile will mean teasing your master just that much more, and might spare you that daily beating. Now I've given you a lot of information for you to handle, and you must be tired. So for the first lesson, I'm going to keep it simple, and only teach you how to make a simple pe peanut butter and jam sandwich. Or, PB and J if you want to impress your man with your knowledge of technical terms. What you want to do, is take two pieces of bread and lay them down flat. Then, you want to take a butter knife, and give that piece of bread a thin layer of butter. It is important to use a, a thin layer only, because you don't want to stick your master's mouth together. That would be bad service. Now you can use either jelly or jam for the second filling, whichever your master prefers, or if you have a particularly lenient master, he may allow you to choose for yourself. If you are using jelly, which is much thinner, then it is important to put a second thin layer of peanut butter on the other piece of bread as well. Remember what we said about moist ingredients. Especially if you're going to store it for your man's lunch while he goes off to earn a living so that you can stay home and look after the house like a good little girl. If jam is being used, it is not necessary to use the second layer of peanut butter as jam is thicker and unlikely to seep through the bed, bread, but it does not hurt to go the extra mile, especially if it saves you your husband's displeasure. Then place the jam on one of the layers of peanut buttered bread. Try to make it a fairly thick spread, but be extra sure to spread it consistently over the surface so that he tastes it with every bite. Then place the two pieces of bread together. Lastly, make sure to cut it diagonally as we discussed, and then place it on a plate. And presto, you are now ready to serve this to your man and prove to him that you are a proper woman who belongs in his kitchen. Next time I'll cover some more advanced sandwich preparation methods, so stay tuned. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. And remember ladies, that the road to a good life is in service to your male oppressors, because there is a penis in happiness.